This tutorial is going to show you how to place a background bitmap image and trace it using Rhino. To get started here, first of all, it's important to note that I'm using small object inches as my template, as the output tools that I'm using in my program read inches. Next thing that I, it's important to note is for this example, I'm going to pretend that I'm giving a student a vinyl sticker project and they're going to be given a 6x6 six six area to work with. So I'm going to work in the top viewport, so I left click in the top viewport, type in rectangle, and the first, first corner rectangle I'm going to select 0, followed by enter, and then I'm going to type in 6, comma 6 as I'm giving them a 6x6 six six rectangle. I'm going to left click on the zoom extents icon. To, that way it zooms in my rectangle to the greatest extent possible in my top viewport. <clears throat> now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and place uh, my background bitmap and to do so I'm going to type in background bitmap and I'm going to locate the file that I want to place and select open. The first corner to select I'm going to select the bottom left hand corner of my rectangle, second corner is the bottom right hand corner of my rectangle, followed by enter. Notice that at this point um, I have a very long object that I'm going to trace or image that I'm going to trace. It's not very tall. I might even be able to get two final stickers out of this one 6x6 six six piece of material. If you're at this point going, why is my uh, background bitmap gray? when the logo or the image, whatever it was that you wanted to work with had color to it, you need to go to view background bitmap and deselect where it says grayscale and that will provide your color. In this case this is a scanned image that I'm working with. It's a piece of um, artwork that a student did up in Alaska and the goal here is to treat, take a, a native artwork piece, twist the Nike swoosh symbol and make it digital so that we can go ahead and plasma cam this part. So now what I'm going to do is adjust my viewport. I'm going to go ahead and left click, hold my left mouse button over the perspective viewport. I'm going to do the same with the right and I'm just sliding the perspective in the right viewport off to the right hand side of my screen. Now for the front viewport I'm going to right click on the word front and I'm going to go to set view and I'm going to select top. At this point I'm going to go ahead and zoom extents all, right click on this icon so that I can see one of my top viewports has my background bitmap placed in it, the one at the bottom of my screen does not have the background bitmap. Now it's time to trace. I'm going to trace this background bitmap, but because this is a grayscale image that I'm going to trace, it, 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 wouldn't, it would be pretty tough for me to go ahead and trace it using a black layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to left click on the red layer on the right hand side of my screen in this panel over here. I'm going to put a check mark on the, the red layer. I could also do this at the bottom of my screen by left clicking on where my layers are and putting a check mark next to the red layer here as well. I'm going to go to Curve, Freeform, Control Points. Now it's time to trace this Nike swoosh. And notice that I'm locked in here. I, I don't have a lot of freedom and I don't like that. And that's because the option ortho is turned on on the bottom of my screen and I'm going to deselect that. Another way of doing that is F8 on your keyboard. So I'm going to go ahead now and get go over the top of my Nike swoosh. And you're going to notice with control points, not my favorite way of tracing, but I'm doing it this way for a reason. Um, is creating a curve that is not flowing through the control point. So I want to make note of that. And I, let's say this is what I want, so I'm going to hit enter. Because of the drawing, it's really hard for me to see, see what I'm working with. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in to this drawing. And this is what I'm talking about. Not very good. Zoom into what you're working with. But I can work with this still. Um, if I select my curve and hit F10 on my keyboard, I can turn on my control points. Because Camtasia will turn off if I hit F10, I have to do it a different way. So I'm going to go to Edit, Control Points, Control Points On. It's asking me to select the object. That's this curve followed by Enter. What's really nice about Rhino, one of the things that I love about it is how easy it is to change your original curves and surfaces using control points. And So I'm just holding my left mouse button over the top of those control points and dragging them into the position that I want them. And it's an easy way for me to change my drawing and make it even more accurate. 
So let's say that this is, and it's pretty close to what I like. That looks good. Escape or F11 will turn my control points off. Now at this point I'm going to do a second way of tracing using curve free form. I use control points the first time. I'm going to use interpolate points the second time. And this is my preference. And to do, anytime I, <clears throat> I tr strongly suggest and, and tell my students it's really, really important to use object snaps. And in this case, we are going to be snapping to the end point of a curve. Therefore, I need the end object snap at the bottom of my screen turned on. The other thing that's really important to note is I want it to be planar. So planar is turned on as well so that all the curves that I draw here, notice the end object snap as I move over here, snaps, left click. So every curve that I draw here is on the same exact plane. So I'm going to go ahead and left click around. And you're going to notice with the input points, it's creating the curve through the points that I'm drawing, which is really nice, and it's exactly why I use this option. Notice the endpoint, followed by enter. Now to go ahead and join these two curves together so they create one closed curve, I'm going to left click, hold down my shift button. On my keyboard, I'm going to left click on both curves, and I'm going to type in the word join. And on my command line, it will tell me two curves join into one closed curve, and that's really important. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom into an area that I think we have um, we have a, a curve that I think that I can get away with drawing one and copying it. So let me just show you how to do that. Curve, freeform, interpolate points. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to like that, followed by enter. Again, that takes me out of the command. Spacebar will take me back into the command or right click my mouse will take me back into the command as well and one more and then I'll snap to the end point I'm going to select both these curves type join hopefully it creates a closed curve and it does now I'm going to type in copy copy from that point there copy to let's say there and let's say right there now again, I don't know if this is exactly what this particular student would want, but um, if I was doing multiple curves that were symmetrical and wanted to make the same, I would just draw one and then copy the rest. Um, what I'm going to do is switch over to a drawing that I've completed. It is the Nike swoosh, and I want to show you one last thing. Um, a good way to check your work is go to Surface, Planar Curves. It's going to ask me for the curves select the planar curves to build a surface from and I'm going to go ahead and window select all of my curves and hit enter. With my top viewport being in the shaded view it will show me exactly what my vinyl sticker is going to look like before I even create it. It's a great way to check your work to check to make sure all of your curves are closed and planar. And we have just completed the, the uh, background bitmap tutorial. Thank you.